Hello traders at Samurai Trader here welcome to this recording how to avoid a choppy or congested market 100% of the time trading around choppy markets uh, range bound markets can be one of the greatest challenges for traders and it's probably one of the areas where they'll experience the most losses so I'm going to give you a solution that works 100% of the time it's absolutely brilliant uh, and there is only one solution and it's simple and the solution is do not trade if you wish to avoid a choppy market uh, and or to be in a market that never uh, never enters chop don't trade because it's one of the greatest challenges that we have and every market will go into a zone but the real purpose of this recording and the second one that I'm going to be doing here is how to avoid these markets how to recognize and then probably most important how do we trade in around and out of these markets so first of all I want us to look at this uh, from a total different angle let's look at a choppy congested consolidated market totally differently let's welcome the chop let's reframe our beliefs about what choppy markets mean to us as traders because what can happen is that when we go into chop we effectively close down some of us are even paralyzed we um, we hesitate on taking trades etc so I want you to reframe your belief pattern here because a break from a consolidation can lead to a big move so let's look for chop and trade the moves that come out of these zones so this whole idea of this recording came from one of my members and as I started to jot down some of the key points I kept adding and hence we're going to have two recordings so the first recording I'll go through a number of PowerPoints and uh, this will probably go for 20 to 30 minutes uh, on how to recognize and trade around market suggestion and by the way it's also known as trading chop and slop uh, and this will be part one now uh, in this one we won't look at too many charts it will be mainly key points now for my members what I've done is put most of these key points down here and it's not complete uh, into a PDF so just to quickly show you this so this is particularly for new members if you go to uh, the folder on my Google Drive called new recordings and uploads you will find the PDF here okay so you will find the PDF in the new recordings and uploads section or folder on my Google Drive now for those using Ninja Trader 7 and 8 by the way I've uploaded a, a number of new indicators into those two folders and for our Renko traders and um, we'll be back to the, the other uh, video in a moment for the Renko traders I have some new videos very important videos going up on the success of Renko systems uh, within the next two or three days so uh, remember to check the Renko charts folder I'll also put the links by the way in the new uploads but don't forget to keep checking the Renko folder now back to this and let me move this uh, PDF so uh, we'll, we'll cover all the key points here and I'll go through them verbally remember uh, uh, please feel if you're not a member please stop the video and jot down the notes and very very important even if you are a member is uh, uh, remember to take notes as I go through these just this one idea just pick up one idea from this recording it may change your trading life forever so first of all as we get into uh, this recording of course I do need to put up the risk disclaimer uh, there is a risk in trading members you've seen this uh, on every one of my recordings if you're new to my training sessions traders please pause the video and read the disclaimer very very quickly members I'll just quickly go through two advertisements if you don't have my free ebooks please click on the description links below and you'll be able to order my ebooks and of course visit my website subscribe to this channel so you'll be kept up to date with all of my new videos I've got hundreds on YouTube now and of course become a member for $197 you gain all of my indicators uh, there's now over 300 videos in the training program uh, that are, that are not general public videos but visit my website uh, and you'll be able to find out more about my program there is no upsell very important that's the end of the advertisement traders let's now get in to the content 
now almost all choppy range-bound markets form a reverse or continuation pattern and usually turn into a strong trend providing excellent trading opportunities so this is why we really want to learn how to recognize an area of chop now as I mentioned in this recording we'll mainly go through PowerPoints and the key points I'm looking for and in session two will be 100% focused on the charts but please stay with me during this recording because I want to go through some very important points now remembering traders we often see a strong move a move in the markets followed by a period of a period of chop or consolidation now usually that's what we call profit taking now at that stage too you'll have uh, traders perhaps uh, attempting to reverse the market thinking the markets going to uh, reverse and this is where many traders are also stopped out so just remember quite often whether you're long or short you'll see a strong move an area of consolidation and then quite often the market will then take off again so it's very very important we learn how to recognize these areas these zones and how do we trade these areas or these zones how do we trade these breakouts so this is what I want to teach you so let's now discuss some of the key points so please jot down pause the video uh, for the members you can get this PDF in the members area so first of all as we are trading we start to see the market stall do we have overlapping bars or candles that is have we seen five or six candles going into a sideways into a trading range some call this particularly in the Forex market uh, barbed wire it's just as applicable it doesn't matter whether you're trading stocks futures or Forex this of course is applicable to every market whether your day swing or position trading now a very easy uh, visual thing for you to see is if you use moving averages which I highly recommend you do even if you're a price action based trader are the moving averages intertwined or sideways let me just quickly show you this now this is actually a Renko chart but that really doesn't matter but notice here my EMAs uh, so I've got four EMAs notice how they're starting to converge now traders converging EMAs or moving averages whatever you use this can be a real issue so quite often we've seen a rally in the market we see then our EMAs in my case EMAs roll over this is an area that we want to be really aware of and of course what we've got here is 200 bounces so we've got 200 EMA bounces we've got all of uh, our EMAs are converging this can be a very very dangerous area now we're going to be talking about how to really tighten up the probability of your trading in a moment in another slide but there's one more point I just want to point out here is notice the long-term stochastic yes you've got your EMAs your moving averages are all starting to intertwine here they're horizontal but notice how my long-term stochastic here is in what I call no man's land okay this is a really good signal that we're heading into an area of chop notice here then uh, I've been oversold I've then uh, started to rise I then get my classic t10 trade right there you can see that there so you've got your EMAs uh, sideways and your long-term stochastic now let's now go back to that slide there now has price action stalled now of course if you're trading uh, a Renko a range a tick chart uh, and of course you'll see this on time by time based charts you'll see that price is actually stalled now watch for W or M patterns or double tops double bottoms and you can see that when we form a channel where we're going up and we're bouncing from a high of the channel that is a sideways action channel to the bottom then bouncing again now just remember that when we get these W or M patterns a double top or double bottom can be a little different in a tight trading range but if they can be a reversal pattern which we'll talk more about in a moment so we've just looked at that now when we're entering uh, or when we're trading full stop remember patience is our number one rule so the reason I bring that up traders it's very very simple if we've got no trend no trade now that is 
in looking at our EMAs and even if you're a pure price action trader is the market are you in a rally is the price action rising is it falling or is it sideways once we start to see the market uh, uh, stall that is we have no trend no trading until we get a breakout and we're going to be talking about that in a moment another thing we're looking at do I have a higher high and higher lows or am I still I still have lower lows or lower highs is the market stair stepping up still now once we start to see the market stall and we're starting to get perhaps new lower highs for an example the market may be rolling over or we may be entering an area of consolidation now traders as I talk about these key points you know I can give you just about everything when it comes to trading as we know in a day traders fast track program there's nothing else you ever need to invest in I cover basically every possible trading scenario that can come up but there's one thing that I can't give you and it's what we call screen time and there's perhaps one other thing psychology and we know that when it comes to trading at 90% is head stuff so when it comes to not trading what plays havoc with our minds is sometimes we start to see things that are not there or we lack this patience so we need to really work on that but getting back to the screen time what I recommend is you go back particularly if you're a new trader or if trader has trading has not been kind to you and you spend the time in going back and looking for these areas of consolidation so you can learn these and then of course watching them set up in real time so have you got higher highs or have you got lower lows is the market stair stepping if yes great if you if this stops you may be going into an area of chop very very important traders what is the AC what is the anchor chart also telling me because that really leads me into the this point down here wait for the sweet spot that is I want to see a fanning of my EMAs and of course we're going to cover this extensively visually in my next video but are the EMAs fanning and actually if we go back to this one here now notice on the hard right here I'm starting to get a separation of the EMAs so we had our classic t10 here we've actually got a t2 set up here as well so we've got a t10 a t10 usually signifies a new trend direction and of course the t2 t2 setup is a trend following strategy and you actually had a t2 here and you had another one here it's above the 50 cent uh, 50 percent level t2 t2 both winning trades just remember though just why I'm here when you enter a trade so close to a 200 EMA time and time again you'll see this bounce so you want to be very very cautious in shorting or even going long when you're just above or below the 200 but getting back to the point here we have a fanning of the EMAs there which is very very important now the other point that I had here is do we have angulation whoops just uh, go back down as always traders my videos are raw real and unedited I don't run with a script uh, so do I have angulation now angulation is very simply where we start to see price action angling away from our moving averages now see this here uh, this is angulation notice here we've got our longer term EMAs and price action is forming uh, I also call this a V bottom or angulation it's angling away when you've got this sort of price action you don't have chop or you're trading out of chop this is great so you want to see a fanning and you can see here the EMAs are fanning and up here this is the area you want to be aware of be very very cautious of now the other things that you also want to be looking at of course is the what is the long-term stochastic telling me now members you know all of our settings on our uh, long-term stochastic and I talk a lot about this for your t9s your t10s and your t2 setups very important what is the long-term stochastic that is if it's overbought you want to be looking for long trades if it's oversold we want to be looking for short trades the next key point here is where are the pivots where are the, the, the support resistance areas and the reason being 
as we head into a floor pivot quite often we will get a period of consolidation or what we call a pivot bounce and we'll look at that very closely in the next recording because this is very very important because also if you enter a trade just say just below a pivot and go long uh, there's a good chance you're going to get a pivot bounce so there's a number of consideration that you need to think about when you're entering an area or not knowing I should say where your pivots are now do you have a trending zero lag MA or a hull MA now for those traders that like to use a zero lag or a hull as you're aware that when they turn you'll have a color change so what you really want to see is a good solid uh, color on your zero lag or on the hull when you're seeing multicolors that is it's flicking backwards and forwards that's quite often a visual sign that you may be entering an area of consolidation now many traders uh, use the and love the ADX I don't personally use the ADX but the ADX uh, is the average directional index is a trend strength indicator that thousands of traders around the world do like to use now many traders will use the Bollinger Keltner squeeze indicator that is when you start to see the Keltner squeeze within the uh, the bands uh, or vice versa I should say you know, let me get it right here I don't use them by the way but they can be uh, an excellent indicator for a newer trader quite frankly once we start to see our EMAs come together uh, that's Good enough for an experienced trader however many traders use the squeeze indicator now traders I should just correct myself because I know what some members are going to say in general public I'm confused now by this squeeze okay so the squeeze is two indicators that is we've got your Bollinger Bands and a Keltner channel on the same now a Keltner channel stays fairly consistent where as you head into an area of consolidation away from volatility the Bollinger Bands will squeeze inside the Keltner now if you want to uh, Google it you'll actually find a lot of information uh, about the Keltner Bollinger Band squeeze and there's actually uh, a number of very very good indicators out there so rather than having both a Keltner and Bollinger Band on your charts you can just have it down as a histogram uh, in a sub -win window on the bottom of your screen so I just wanted to clear that up because I know some of you might have got a little confused there okay now Renko works well in smoothing out the trend allowing you to visually recognize congestion zones uh, many of you, of you are, are aware that I'm really loving the new Renko charts and trading with them personally and loving it so I'm finding also it makes it a lot easier to recognize areas of consolidation so just be aware and using Renko and by the way range somewhat does that as well so range is very similar to Renko and it also helping smoothing out your charts next thing is do I have a bull or a bear flag now if we look at bull and bear flags within themselves bull and bear flags only work in a strong trending market and if you've got any an extended number of candles any more than say six to eight uh, maybe it's not a bull or a bear flag and so but it's still good to know if you've got a bull or a bear flag because usually particularly in strong trending markets you're going to get a good breakout and by the way I'm talking about trading patterns and this is where uh, for new traders you can suffer it's very easy to suffer from overwhelm however set a goal of maybe spending 30 minutes a day on studying charting patterns uh, because it does make it a lot easier that as you trade that you're marking up on your charts trend lines etc because it just makes it um, uh, a lot easy to recognize some of these issues that we're talking about so do I have a channel now is that channel trending which is really what I want to see or is it range bound do I have a horizontal channel and we'll look at one of those in a moment do I have a wedge or a triangle uh, formation now usually wedges and triangles are turning into a trading range now while wedges and triangles can act as a reversal pattern after a long trend they are more commonly a continuation pattern and that's where it really pays you to learn to recognize and to draw up as you trade a wedge or a triangle because you're usually looking for a breakout a 
trend continuation and that is really what my key point here is what are my trend lines telling me by drawing up the trend lines of course visually you can see all of these key points here and what you're really looking for traders is we're looking for trending that is sloping trend lines the next point here is I want to bring up let me get to the next chart is do I have a fractal breakout or a fractal trend line now let me just show you this many of you are aware that uh, I've traded fractal trend line breaks for many many years and this is actually a chart going back to 2009 and these key points here are fractal breakouts okay so we can see the fractal points here's a fractal point there's one uh, we've got a fractal up here and here you've got a fractal there and there you've got a fractal here and here a fractal here and here and so as fractals and for my members of course most charting packages there I've got the fractal indicator on virtually or for every trading package there is uh, all, all the key ones listed there anyway and so these will plot for you so what you simply do is draw trend lines as you see these plot because it's a great visual representation of what sort of market you're in and of course I've got a number of videos on trading fractal trend line breaks but just it's just another way if you're marking up your fractal points in recognizing when you may be entering into a range bound market now the next thing here is what is the five minute and 15 minute chart telling me now for me where I'm I trade with either range tick or Renko charts I've also got a time based chart set up there where I can if I'm not sure or I just want to have a look at a time based chart I can flick it across to a five and a, and a 15 minute now I know what some scalpers are saying we don't need those if you're scalping but it's just something you may look to look at look at so what you're looking at or looking for I should say is bars or candles on a five minute if you see five six candles sideways it's a good visual representation that you are in chop a couple of really important points here also respect the time now time of day can be a very big issue when it comes to trading for example around lunchtime uh, red flag news can be an issue FOMC government reports so you want to always be checking uh, Forex um, uh, factory dot com uh, econo news so these are some of the websites that we check that we check every day because leading up to a major announcement most markets will go into a period of consolidation or chop they'll quiet them right down until the major announcement comes out so it's very very important that you check that the next point here is time in a trade can be an issue now something may have changed most of you are aware if I've been in a trade for six to eight candles usually I'll either exit or strongly be considering exiting the market okay uh, usually it means that I am in a period of chop something may have changed I'll exit you can always get back in very very important it, um, it's just one of my risk management now quite often uh, I can be wrong it can move but you can always get back in just something for you can to consider now contract or option expiry days these can be issues and this is where you can see the market go into a long period of consolidation or chop uh, low volume now I'm actually recording this uh, in between Christmas and New New Year's uh, 2017 so if we look at our volume on the ES where generally would see 1.6 to 2 million contracts we're only seeing 400,000 contracts being traded today so we're in a very low volume market we're still seeing some nice moves particularly on the NQ CL and gold but you're still getting those areas of consolidation so just be aware of low volume days and also pre-market opens you can see the market quieten down uh, I mentioned earlier get to know your patterns drawing trend lines as you trade flags are short-term trading ranges with a minimum of five to six uh, sorry five to uh, sorry three to five candles just be aware that if they get too many candles here you, look you, I'll show you a pattern in a moment can be but uh, once again study flags that's the best thing um, I've already mentioned here about uh, refractal points here another filter here is really this is uh, something that I've give my members and say look your best markets 
uh, are trendy markets for my form or style of trading and really I want to see 30% or better so you might just like to consider that and have that down do I have I call this angulation do I have a fanning of the EMAs if your EMAs on your chart are not fanning not separating because we're using a, a number of long-term up to uh, through to short term if they're not separating the market is not fanning they're the areas that you want to be very very cautious of now getting back here to getting to know patterns now when you have fractals on your charts it makes it a lot easier to draw trend lines because it removes the discretion I'm very much a rules based trader by following rules it removes a lot of the emotion from your trading which is very very important and so I would be drawing these lines usually based upon fractal points uh, mentioned here we've got a number of flags here now we can see flags work either bull or bear flags in a strong training market and we can see here the market is actually rolled over and this is where we'd be drawing our fractal points by the way now ascending and descending triangles I draw these up on my charts very very actively because you can see here we're heading into a trading range but if you're a day trader whether you're trading Forex stocks or futures uh, I think these are probably the most important uh, patterns that you can be drawing because usually uh, in probably 99% of the cases they will lead to a significant breakout in one direction or another so take the time in learning and understanding ascending and descending triangles so we're 27 minutes into this recording so this is session one now remember members to go and download the PDF now in session two we're going to look at how to confirm a new trend or breakout using fractal breaks so I'll show you how to make it work with fractal breaks uh, how to look for the fanning of the EMAs and when you've got a fanning on the AC that is the anchor chart and the entry chart the your probabilities of a successful trade absolutely soar likewise when you see candles uh, or bars depending what you trade uh, or bricks if you're trading Renko all trending or closing in the top third on both the anchor and the entry chart that also increases the probability we'll look at that do you have uh, trend line breaks and by the way micro trend line breaks which I'll show you we'll look at now for members you'll understand this but the rule of one rule of two this is uh, by the way members on the rule of one this is one of the brand new videos the rule of one is probably one of the most recent developments that I have for you with the new range of Renko charts that we can now get uh, it's absolutely critical that you look at the rule of one it's going to dramatically improve your trading so anyway I'm going to be looking at the rule of one rule of two the t1 t2 all of our standard setups how do how we look for new uh, lows and highs we'll be discussing the long-term stochastic and we'll be talking about trading the first retracement after a breakout so all of this is going to be in the second video so as we uh, finish up this recording uh, I hope that you picked up a couple of ideas traders uh, unfortunately uh, in dealing with the trading community if you've already blown your account once or twice uh, usually you come to something new with a closed mind it is very very important traders that you open your mind to possibilities it's important that if trading hasn't been good for you up to now or kind to you that you look at your past trading experiences as a learning experience yes you may have lost thousands of dollars I deal with it. I've got thousands of members around the world now and some have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars and as I say to them you've got to reframe it and you've got to look at that as really a cost of your education up till now but it's time to draw a line in the sand and that line in the sand starts with this 
it starts with looking at your learning as say when you watch videos like mine is what can I learn from this what's good about this how can I use this because unfortunately a lot of traders particularly if they've lost money or been losing money will look at something that won't work this is no good they haven't even tried it now we know that the sign of an intelligent person is how open they are to new ideas now I'm not saying don't verify those new ideas and by the way um, Gann famously said there's nothing new under the Sun uh, when it comes to trading now, I think that's true so most of what I show you is just being consolidated just giving you the good stuff but it's very important that you approach this with an open mind because guess what it works if it is to be it's up to me it's very important that you approach trading and learning how to trade with an open mind a willingness to learn thank you traders I'll see you on video two and video two will be out within the next three or four days thank you traders